right, so on this one, before we get started, I actually just want to thank you for watching Launch With Code. Um, I realize that there's some things that might be a little bit of an overlap for some of you, for others of you, everything's brand new. Um, but all of this stuff, this code is all on our GitHub, github.com slash coding for entrepreneurs slash launch dash with dash code. Um, so you can actually check out all the code that we're working with um, and you'll be able to use it hopefully in no time and you'll understand kind of how it works also hopefully in no time. Uh, if you don't, that's okay because there's plenty of other tutorials that we have that can help you learn and master Django and all the other things that we do. Um, so um, also at this point, if you like these videos, I really hope that you like the actual pages or each video themselves. And then please share them with friends. We re really want more people to code. I know it's called Coding for Entrepreneurs and I know it says for entrepreneurs, but really it's for non-technical people and people who want to become more technical and might have an idea for a project. So filmmakers, they are entrepreneurs. They don't call themselves entrepreneurs and they don't think of themselves as making a business, but really starting a film is so much like entrepreneurship. It takes a lot of creativity, probably more creativity to actually launch and create and execute a film, but they still got to market. They still got to do all those things. But at the same time, learning to code helps you think differently. It helps you think in uh, and see the world in, in, a, in a little bit of a different perspective. And also having your perspective, if you can code, you can make some cool and interesting projects that most people just don't even think about because a lot of people just don't code. So those are your friends that are really talented and creative, please invite them to come learn. Even if they haven't done anything before, this would be a good time for them to kind of check it out. All right, so now that that's done, um, I also want to mention that if you have any suggestions for Coding for Entrepreneurs, you go to codingforentrepreneurs.com uh, slash suggest, and you will be able to actually suggest projects um, or, and vote up other suggestions that people have made. Uh, there's quite a few suggestions on here, obviously, and then you can just add in one and you can log in and it's you can create a free account down here to actually log in. So you don't actually have to become a full member to still be able to suggest new projects or topics or just anything in general that you think would be nice. Um, and then in, on each one, they have like a little comment too. And as you also notice, they are anonymous and I want to keep it that way just so we can kind of allow people to just give their honest suggestion without you know having too much tied in there all right so now let's actually get back to work we are going to be working with git bootstrap.com in this one so we left it off where our template file let's make sure our server is running uh doesn't look so great so let's go back in here and i want to just save a few things if i see this it says hello welcome um okay so that's all right but I want it to look a lot nicer like Git Bootstrap. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go into um, our getting started here. And then there's some examples. Now you can read about all this stuff, but we're going to go off of the examples. I'm just going to jump right into the examples. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one right here, Jumbotron. I like this Jumbotron one. It's pretty solid. And a nice thing about Bootstrap is it's responsive. So if I change the size of the browser, it changes with it. Now, I can't cover all the bootstrap stuff, but um, because it's just, it's there's a lot to it. So what we'll do is just kind of the basics and just jump right into the coding. Um, so I wanna actually copy this page now. So there's a few ways to do it, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna right click or control click if you're on a Mac and go to view page source. Another way to do it is view developer view source. Uh, it is going to be different on what, whatever browser you're on, but you just want to view the page source. If you don't know how to do it on your browser, you can also just search it, Google um, how to actually view the page source. But let's view the page source. And what we see here is a bunch of HTML code. So I actually want to copy the entire thing. All right. So this is probably not the fastest method to do this, but it's one that everyone can kind of understand. So I'm going to copy that. Uh, you know, you can do control control click and copy or right click and copy or you can hit command C or control C if you're on a Windows to copy it and then I'm going to put it below what we did with our base alright so now we have two HTML stuff so I actually want to get rid of this I just want to keep block content really um, so I'm gonna just cut that 
And now we have all the HTML code. If I scroll down, I've got this nav bar here, and then I have a jumbotron and then container, right? So it says jumbotron, it says container. So container is gonna be this bottom part, right? And you can know that by just looking, okay, it says heading, 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 and there's three of them, heading, 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 there's three of them. Um, so let's actually get rid of all of that container, everything that's in it, with the exception of the div class itself. So I'm gonna make it simple on us and just delete one at a time. That way I am not confusing anybody. So I'm going from div to div and it, it's underlined in Sublime Text so it shows you kind of where it opens and where it closes. Uh, so that's how HTML works. All right, and then last but not least, this row and this comment. All right, so I put block content in there now and we'll do something about the Jumbotron here shortly. And the nav bar, I'm going to cut and go into my templates, go to new file, save it as navbar.html, and just paste it in there. I'm not gonna use it right now, but there we go. All right, so we now just have a Jumbotron and block content. So let's actually look at our page now. So if I refresh this, it's just gonna look a lot more like this page. Not exactly, because we got rid of that nav bar, but very similar. So if I refresh in here, uh-oh. Well, the code's there, so let's actually see what's going on. If I scroll up, this means that my CSS is not working. So if you ever see this, it, that's all it means. Your CSS is not working. And that also would probably mean that your JavaScript's not working too, but we'll worry about that later. For now, we'll go back into our source, and let's see why. Well, it says dot dot slash dot dot slash for the first style sheet. Well, this dot dot slash is a good notation if it's relative, so that means it's relative to this domain, right? So we talked about paths a little bit. This is a path that's linked to Bootstrap, but it's relative to that domain. So if I actually copied this and I put it up here, it's gonna give me that right path. So if I hit enter, it gives me the right path and it shows me the CSS. You don't have to know what this means, but this is a file that's gonna make our stuff look good. If I go back, well, I can also click on this. It's gonna take me to that same page. But all that's doing, the dot dots, makes it relative to whatever page it's on. All right, so that also might be an error that you might see. Now, this one, on the other hand, is not gonna be relative. Or, excuse me, it's also relative still. It's relative to that page as well. Um, but it's not going back any folders, right? So, like, as we see here, it's not going back. Now, if it had a sl just a slash on the front, that would mean that it would go to the home page, but you could click on it to see like where they're going and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy the link, copy the link address, and then replace it where it is. This is how we're gonna do it now. Well, it's not how we're gonna do it long term, but this is how we'll do it now, just so we can get things working. And if you already kind of know what to do for the CSS stuff, in Django, you can go ahead and pause and then just come back in a little while. All right, so paste this. So I'm just copying all of their stuff. Oh, there's one more that I need, which is this one right here. And I'm just gonna paste it at the top there. Copy that, paste this one out. And it's it's commented out, that's why it's doing that, but it's for uh, uh, Internet Explorer 9. Uh, for those users that have it, we do still wanna give them some support. All right, so I'll go back. And then this one's already running through, that's good. If I scroll to the bottom, I see that jQuery's already there, and then I have Bootstrap, and I just wanna grab that last one. So copy link address, sorry, that, that went off the screen. So I'll copy it here, and scroll down to the bottom, paste it there. All right, so that tedious work um, is now done. And if I refresh in here, we see, all right, look at this. It's actually starting to look better. And if I re change the size of it, it does change the size. It's it's looking looking better. It's looking closer to what we want, right? So let's reference what we want. So what we're building towards is Swift for Entrepreneurs. So once we check out this site, all right, so like we see ours here and Swift for Entrepreneurs here. Right, so we see that, okay, well, it's getting there. We got this like jumbotron area like this. 
Uh, we don't have that image in the background, which we'll work on, but it's mostly very similar, right? We have a footer here, and yeah, so we're we're getting we're getting there as far as the design goes. Um, all right, well, cool. So in here we can change stuff. So like this, I'm gonna change it to launch with code, and that what that does is changes this up here. And you won't have this little icon in here, and that's because it's a fav icon, which is just in my browser's cache. So you could you could have a link here to an image, PNG or ICO, uh, that will allow that icon to come through. Um, so, like what we've got now is just we have a decent design in the works. It's pretty much ready to go. Uh, we have Bootstrap now in here. There's still a lot more that we need to do. One thing you might note is like, well, why is this way up here? Why is there this, this gap here? And that's because of the, well, the um, nav bar up here, right? So the navigation bar is not there. I took it out. So if we look at our patty, if we look in here and I click on body, I see that jumbotron.css has these extra paddings here, right? So this extra stuff, if I click on it, it changes it. So I can... I can actually play around with a lot of CSS here. And if I scroll down, I see this color. Oh, well, hey, look, I can change the color too. All right, so this is a way to like actually kind of test things in real time. And if I do a refresh, it goes back to exactly how it was, unless I override it, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'll go to inspect element and on body, I click on body. I see this padding top. I don't want the padding top. In fact, I don't want the padding bottom either. So I'm gonna change it to zero. I'm not gonna just cross it out. I want it to be zero pixels um, and to do to actually make that be the case we have to go into our base.html and underneath our css files that we have linked in we can do style a style tag and just add it in here so body and well a faster way to do this would just be to copy this whole thing here select it and then paste it in here and if I select it and hit tab, it'll tab it in. All right, so this will allow us to have that actually working. So if I refresh now, there it is. And if we see in here, we have our body styles. And if I uncomment them, the jumbotron.css takes over. So it's actually what the browser is doing is reading from left to right to the bottom. And it's seeing that this new style is there and it changes it. Now, if you want to learn more about how to change styles and make it really cool then you have to learn CSS um, to really customize this completely. But what we did can be used on anything. So if I go to inspect element here at learn more, I can see that, hey, look, I got this button. And if I scroll over here on the styles, I see that there's this color here. So I can change this color, right? Well, I change the background color. It doesn't seem to be changing a whole lot. So let's, let's see if I can scroll down a little bit and see if there's another color that I would need to change and it looks like it's still not oh I changed the hover that's nice all right so it looks like I might have actually selected inspect element when I was hovering so let's refresh and I'll do inspect element again and button large so here we go BTN primary all right so in that case I just selected it weird and now I'm back and I see that it says BTM primary and that's a class that it is, but I can change the color of it. So the default color, I can come in here and change. Now, again, this is kind of hacking CSS. If you want to further understand CSS, you would have to actually uh, just learn more about it to actually make changes like real substantial changes. But for minor changes, what we're doing here is actually pretty good. Uh, but I do want to note that BTM primary is a type of color that Bootstrap comes with. So if we look at getbootstrap.com, go back there and look in CSS, and then we look in buttons, we see there's all these different colors here. So we can change the defaults, but if you wanted a green button instead of blue one, you could just use BTN success. So to do that, we would come in here and we'd go to our Jumbotron and change BTN primary, which is what we see here to BTN success. So we change this. All right, go back in here, do a refresh. Now it's green. 
So there's already default colors that actually come through. And worst case scenario, you can just copy all of these and put them in. So you can test it on your own without having to do too much work here. So we save that there. Refresh, now I have all of these buttons. Well, hey, they're not as big. So let's actually look at that one. Oh, well, we'll see BTN-LG. Well, these don't have BTN-LG, so let's add that. Ah, cool, makes it bigger. That's what that does. All right, so um, you can play around with that, and that's true for all types of components inside of Bootstrap. All right, they'll give you code, so you can actually play around with it. Here's sizes, right? And you see the colors are there. And BTN is signifying that it's actually a class, so you need to have BTN to make it a button. Uh, and then it has some other stuff. So when you press it, when you have it as an anchor active tag, like so it's already pressed, you have it disabled, all types of stuff. Again, Bootstrap is has a lot of things to it, so we're not going to cover any more, really. That's that's pretty much it. I mean, I might I will cover things that are necessary, but that's pretty much it when it comes to Bootstrap. So if you want to learn more, definitely check out some of our other of, of our other classes because we do go into more with Bootstrap there. All right, so for now, I'm going to delete all these buttons. Just get rid of them. And we'll keep it like this. And that's it. So in the next one, we are actually going to create an app to handle some stuff for us, which would include eventually saving a user's email address. All right, see you in the next one.